Thank you for joining our last session before closing for the day. You are at Deep Listening, a practice of building trust and amplifying community wisdom. I will be a co-facilitator for this circle, and I have the honor of doing that in partnership with Marilu Chanrasmi. Marilu is a certified somatics coach, mindfulness and Qigong practitioner, and an experienced facilitator of circles. Her way in holding circles creates a space that is healing, embodied, reflective, and equitable. She meets people where they are on their journey while also challenging them to see with more than their eyes and hear with more than their ears. She is a founding member of Deep Listening for Social Change, a peaceful action group that was formed by members of the Twin Cities BIPOC mindfulness community in response to the murder of George Floyd in 2020. Deep Listening for Social Change uses the practice of deep listening as an anti-racist tool for having difficult conversations, healing from the wounds of systemic and community-specific racism, and creating a greater sense of interconnection in order to facilitate sustained social change. Marilu leads the Care Center Northern Tier efforts in her role at CARE, which stands for Companions and Animals for Reform and Equity. She has been collaborating and partnering with Minnesota tribal communities since 2008 around human and animal well being. She is deeply committed to centering community wisdom, building authentic relationships, and amplifying the voices of Black, Indigenous, and people of color and those from marginalized community, communities. She has served as a liaison, mentor, and guide to trusted allies wanting to learn a new way of listening and being in their work with tribal communities. Marilu, it's a pleasure to have you with us at the Co-Sheltering Conference for the second year in a row. And it's my honor to support this deep listening circle that we are about to hold. Well, thank you everyone for joining. I appreciate it. Um, as Christine said, this is not going to be a lecture. I had no PowerPoint slides. You know, my invitation is for everyone to, um, I just have to share when Christine was reading my bio, um, I was noticing in my body, I was having a very somatic and visceral, re you know, it's just like, I'm very uncomfortable. And I know that about myself, about somebody like bios, honestly. So I was like, part of me was like, hey, Christine, faster, 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 but zoom through it, <laughs> zoom through it. <laughs> you know, Cause I am just Mari Lou. Um, so what I'm gonna um, invite you to do right now is um, listening circles in the virtual world is we have to create it in a different way, you know, in terms of circles that we can hold in person, you know? So I have um, begun to create the space um, in my space here, um, you know, lighting a candle, hopefully I don't cause a fire if I don't put a piece of paper onto the candle that I've lit. Um, but I'm going to invite everyone to move, um, to notice first where you feel all your energy, you know, and if you feel your energy up in your head, because that's a lot of what we do is we, we have it here, is to invite yourself to drop the energy into your body, into your heart. And just notice what that feels like to actually drop from moving from your head, which is a very powerful survival strategy for human beings, is to move from your head to your heart. And then also drop your breathing from your chest area to your center. And by center, your chi, your lower dantian, I mean, it's like right below your belly button. So feeling your breathing from there. So you begin to notice what it feels like your energy flowing through your body. And when you're breathing from your center, it's not about having the tightest, like you're going to the gym. You know, you actually want to be able to expand out. So feel your breathing from the center. Um, I'm going to invite for everyone to be present here. Um, in Western society, sometimes multitasking is viewed as a skill to have. We cannot actually multitask. So I'm going to invite for everyone for the next 75 minutes to actually be present and to be here. Okay. So no multitasking, which is why we are going to be shutting Zoom chat at some point. You're not going to be able to even do that. 
through this time, I just want you to notice as you're breathing, just notice what comes up. You know, if thoughts come up, you know, just acknowledge them. And as for those who practice any type of mindfulness, it's just acknowledging them as they arise. Somebody says something, just notice it again. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just invite everyone for the next two minutes. Um, and I think Kendra um, is for this one, you're welcome to close your eyes um, and just listen to this two minute song and focus on your breathing. Water flows through me. I am the water I am. Water flows through me. I am the water I am. She gives me life. Yes, she gives me life. She gives me life to live. She gives me life. She gives me life. She gives me life to live. Fire flows through me. I am the fire I am. Fire flows through me. I am the fire I am. She gives us life. Yes, she gives me life. She gives me life to live. She gives me life. She gives me life. She gives me life to live. Music flows through me. I am the music I am. Music flows through me. I am the music I am. She gives me life. Yes, she gives me life. She gives me life to live. She gives me life. She gives me life. She gives me life to live. The river flows through me. I am the river I am. The river flows through me. I am the river I am. She gives me life. Yes, she gives me life. She gives me life to live. She gives me life. She gives me life. She gives me life to live. She gives me life, yes, she gives me life. She gives me life to live. She gives me life, she gives me life. She gives me life to live. Thank you. Christine, I'm gonna pass to you. Great, thank you. Um, so now we ourselves are going to be doing a grounding activity. Um, I would like for everyone to really put yourself in your body. And as Mar Marlou had um, mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of as the I'm sorry, I'm muted. I apologize. Um, so um, I'm going to invite everybody to do this grounding activity um, where we really put ourselves in our own bodies. And as Marilu had mentioned earlier, um, a lot of our energy, a lot of what we're used to, especially on Zoom conferences where we're, like our, our heads are literally framed, um, our energy is all up here. And so I would like for us to begin by really just noticing our own bodies, um, how it's feeling, um, where the tension is. Uh, so I actually would love for everybody to stand up out of their chairs, because I think a lot of us have been sitting all day. Um, and I know I forced, I, I like made everybody turn on their cameras, but if you're more comfortable, feel free to turn off your camera, which I am going to do. <laughs> And as you stand up out of your chairs, if you are able, um, please just go ahead and stretch in whatever way makes you feel good, noticing, first of all, sort of where the tension is. And for me, I'm just going to talk out loud and describe to you what's going on in my own body. I have a ton of tension in my lower back and in my shoulders and in my neck right now. 
And so the way that I am gonna address that is I am going to lift my arms over my head, point my fingers straight up to the ceiling and just stretch my spine as much as I can. And then I'm gonna move myself to the left and stretch my side and move myself to the right and stretch my side. And now I'm just noticing how I'm feeling. My back feels significantly better. And I would love for you all to just take a moment to think about what else in your body feels tension. Go ahead and stretch that out and notice how you feel afterwards. Okay, and if you all can take about 10 seconds to wind down. And take a seat or stand, either one, um, but come back to us. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. And I hope you keep that sort of mindfulness about your body and how it's feeling with you as we continue with the circle. Thank you, Christine. Appreciate it. My spine popped. <laughs> My spine popped as I was. Uh... <laughs> All right. Um, before we um, turn up chat, actually, I'd love to keep the, is it wo Wova, Hova chat? Oh, Hova. Hova. See, I was. Wrong always. Hoova. Okay. Hoover. Um, has anyone um, practiced listening circles, deep listening circles? If anybody has, I'm just curious. Feel free to drop it in the chat if you have. Um, while you're doing that, what um, I just want to start by reading a, a, a quote by Rachel Naomi um, Remen. Listening is the oldest and perhaps the most powerful tool of healing. It is often through the quality of our listening and not the wisdom of our words that we are able to affect the most profound changes in the people around us. When we listen, we offer with our attention an opportunity for wholeness. Our listening creates sanctuary for the homeless parts within the other person. That which has been denied, unloved, devalued by themselves and others. That which is hidden. So I have um, had the opportunity to learn about deep listening when I first began to work with the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe, when an elder, I had never really heard the concept of deep listening. And then most recently with Deep Listening for Social Change um, that I'm a part of, one of the teachers that I've had the honor of learning from is Pat McCabe. Pat McCabe is Dene, um, an elder, an activist, an artist, um, an amazing, amazing human being. And one of the things that she has taught us is um, a couple of circles. One is the circle of allowing, and one is the circle of witnessing. Um, Today, what we're going to do is we are going to um, practice a circle of witnessing, um, mainly because the circle of allowing means everyone would be in the circle and it would go on for however long it needs to go on. And with over 200 people on this call, <laughs> we would probably be here for a couple of years. Okay, so we're going to do a circle of witnessing where we'll have an inner circle and an outer circle. And what I'd like to do is um, as part of the circle on the inner circle, if we were in person, we would have a center. And in that center, um, everyone would bring something that is meaningful to them. 
right? So for me, I have, I have a rock. Um, that is what I call my spirit rock, rock for my spirit dog um, that I have with me. Um, I also have brought water here, you know, so I have water here by, um, and then I've also um, lit a candle for fire. Um, what I'm gonna do is invite for everyone to put into the chat, right? So I'm inviting everyone to put into the center of the circle a name, a place, a being, something that is meaningful to you. Something, some being that you're deeply connected to. And to offer that to the center of our circle. I love seeing all that's coming through and seeing a lot of beautiful places, family, dogs. Family. And just a reminder again, when we're asked like what deeply matters to us, when we're caught up in the, in the rush of work and we think that Nothing's more important than this deadline. All this thing that everything, I got to get this done, I got this done. But when it comes down to it, what really matters is what we're seeing in the chat. You know, so we're inviting all of that energy and spirit into the center of the circle. So what we're going to do, so just like you're, you're going to have to visualize with me and imagine we're going to have an inner circle. So in a little bit, we're going to um, invite those with lived experiences of homelessness to into, um, into the inner circle. Uh, if we were in a physical place together, then everybody else will be on the outer circle. So what we're doing is we're, I'm adapting this for a virtual format, you know, so everybody else will be in the outer circle. Um, cameras will be off, you won't be seen, um, muted. And at that point also, I'm going to ask that there will be no chat no conversation on chat either. Um, ask that nobody take notes. You know, this is a practice around really listening, you know, really deeply listening to what not necessarily is even just the words that are being said, but the essence of what someone is saying. Sometimes when you hear somebody is saying something, the words are coming out, but their body language and what is like is not in sync. And the truth is in what is in the nonverbal, is in the body. We know that. Even if we don't know that here, we know that. So I'm gonna invite for everybody in the outer circle to really listen. You're welcome if you want to have a piece of paper by you. If this were, we're physically together, this is what Pat McCabe does. On the outer circle, you know, she allows you to have a piece of paper, a crayon, a writing utensil, and if things come up where you want to draw or something just emerges for you, um, feel free to do so on that. But if you notice yourself getting reactive, responding to somebody, um, take a deep breath and just really try to be present, to come present and listen deeply to what is being said. Um, I can't think anything else on the outer circle. Um, think um, if you find yourself starting to feel uncomfortable about something, somebody saying something, um, you know, you know your bodies, you know your truth, you will know whether or not you're able to sit through it, right? If something is really uncomfortable and it's not, honor that, right? We live in a society where oftentimes we think the answers are outside of us. The answers are outside. The answers are inside of us. Um, 
So I think that's all I have for the outer circle. An invitation for you to really challenge yourself to not multitask, to not chat, um, to see what it feels like in your body, to listen to the inner circle. And with that, if we can go ahead and spotlight those who are going to be in the inner circle. Let me know when our circles come back. Okay, we're still waiting for a few more folks, but also just an instruction for people. Um, at this time, you'll want to change your view settings from gallery to speaker mode. And this way you see only the people who are spotlighted. So again, that's changing your view settings from gallery to speaker. All right, Christine, is that? Um, we're waiting for Nicole Sullivan. Christine, we need uh, Nicole to turn her camera on. I see. Okay. While we're, while we're waiting for Nicole, um, Jillian, I just make sure I'm going to go through, make sure if I pronounce anybody's name incorrectly, you know, please let me know. Um, so Jillian, Amber, Nicole, Marlene, and Sandra. Wonderful. All right. Um, and then, all right. So I'm going to invite for everybody also in the outer circle. Um, to go ahead and you can actually turn your cameras off and be on mute uh, so that we'll have this um, inner inner circle so that those in the inner circle aren't distracted by the outer circle. Um, all right. How's everyone feeling? All right. Have a little uh, butterfly action happening in my chest, but I'm trying to work that out. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the. Uh, right. Same here. Same here. Working it out. <laughs> okay. Hello. I uh, I had a little bit of butterfly action as well before. And, uh, We've been having some issues. This is the Gothican family. <laughs> um, and if we all have butterflies, honestly. The butterflies are beautiful. We can all have a whole bunch of butterflies here. Uh, all right, well, what, um, so I want for the five of you to visualize the six of us in an inner circle, right? With the fire, water, um, <clears throat> the objects um, in the center, those that are meaningful for each of us. And again, just um, feeling your heart, um, noticing what's happening in your body. You know, we, we don't pay attention to really acknowledge the, um, the noticing of the butterflies um, in your chest. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a question into the center of the circle. And then we're going to go around the circle. There is to be no crosstalk. There's going to be no interruptions. When someone is speaking, <clears throat> the rest of us will listen. Not with a thought of, gosh, am I next? What am I going to say? All right. So pay attention to as you're going, as we're going around, not will I have a response for that or what am I going to say? And when that happens, because it's going to happen, trust me. <laughs> Okay. just acknowledge it and return back to just really listening to what the person is saying and what the person is not saying. 
And if we're gonna go in a circle, we'll start to the left. Um, I'm taught by the, my indigenous friend that that is the direction of the energy life force. So we're going to the left. So I'm virtually, I'm gonna tag the person up on my left on the screen. And then um, you always have the option, you may pass. If you don't feel ready, don't feel comfortable, you're not at a place, you may pass. Um, when you are done, like if we had, um, I would be passing you this rock that I have, but since we're not physically person, just imagine that I'm passing it. And while you're holding that, you're the only one that will speak and nobody else will speak. And then when you are complete, just say that you're complete. And then tag the person on your left. Right, until we get to go around the circle. If the person is already gone, then just go to the next person, essentially. Any questions on that? So the question I'm gonna put into the center of the circle, what does home mean to you? What does home mean to you? And I'm going to start with Jillian. What home means to me I've learned it doesn't have to be a building or any kind of physical structure. I've learned through my journey in and out of shelter and house, I've learned that family is home to me. If I am surrounded by my family, complete family, that's my pets and all, I'm home. I'm passing to the next. And if you can go ahead for you and tag the person on your left, Julia. Oddly, you're on my left. Okay, next one. <laughs> uh, Sandra. Um, hi. Home to me. Um, I agree it's being with family, not so much of a structure, but it's also having having owning my emotions, which is home, a joy me home. Um, it's where I can be comfortable and safe in my emotions. And um, above all, the one thing that I have learned, home for me needs to be attached to a sense of peace or peacefulness for myself. And um, it also helps the others my families as are around me. Cause when I learn one thing, when I don't have peace, it kind of all um, gets disheveled for me. So that's what home means to me. Um, I'm gonna pass my rock to, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> to my left, which is uh, Mar Marlene. Okay, so home to me means, I went back and forth on this one. Um, I don't think I could have answered this um, six months ago. Um, it, it, it became really clear to me once I was going to, through my situation um, and I was able to realize what home was. To me, home is somewhere where I'm at peace, somewhere where I can be myself. Home is a reflection of me, you know, being able to have my belongings and just kind of display, you know, who I am. Um, it's a place where I have my privacy. I have, I'm comfortable. Um, a place I can go and feel like I belong and not feel like I'm in someone else's space wondering, um, am I welcome? Um, it's, it's, it's about having security. Um, that's what home is for me. And I was, like I said, able to see this. Sometimes we go through these things where we, we don't, we, we take for granted the little things. Um, 
But like I said, I've had time to actually see and look what was humming, what was missing. And once I was able to get myself on my feet and actually obtain a home, I was able to see what was missing, what, you know, what that was. I'm going to pass it to Amber. Hi. So home to me is literally my children and my dog. That is that is it. We have gone through a lot in the last few years and situations where my children were here or there and separated. I have five of them. And I now just have been able to bring all my children back to me under one household. And stability is a huge deal for us. That is my home to have them here with me and together that that's my home wherever my children are. Um, and I would say I could pass to the left, but I'm not sure who's on my left because I'm on Zoom. Some On my screen, somebody just got spotlighted. Oh. And I, I can don't... only see in you. Okay, but you only see the two of us? Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you don't see anybody else. All right. Um, no. All right, then I think we're actually complete on the circle because I think we had Nicole and Nicole. Um, uh, sorry, Nicole Goffigan uh, is part of the inner circle and she's spotted. Okay. Now. okay, okay. So Nicole Goffigan, is that okay? All right, wonderful. So Nicole um, would love for you if you um, feel ready to share what does home mean to you? Can anybody else hear? No. I can't hear. I can't hear, but I can see some lovely expressions. <laughs> I can see some. <laughs> and Amber, can you see? No, ma'am. Unfortunately, we can't hear you, Nicole. I wish I could lip read. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Christine, if you can hear me, I'm gonna, um, we're gonna keep moving until, unless you know the tech people can kind of like assist with that. Um, I don't do sign language, I should. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a plan. We'll try to troubleshoot on our end. Wonderful. All right, so um, thank you for the four of you. So what a, I don't know if we'll have time for a second, but so a, a second round of another question that I had. Um, but if you had to share in one or two sentences, you know, like what, um, what was the essence of what you heard um, from what was shared or what did you feel? Like, what was it? I felt a lot of, um, you know, my butterflies just kind of went out my ear and like, just listening to everybody um, speaking, uh, it was just beautiful, um, you know, things that I didn't mention, everybody else said. And then if something, <laughs> you know, you think something may have gotten left out and somebody else said it, you know, it was beautiful to um, share this with everyone. Um, I've, I felt a sense of um, per, uh, 
perseverance and not uh, not giving up um, a sense of hope that the situations everybody went through that we all knew that some somewhere somewhere we found it in us just to keep going and uh, that that's what I got what I heard was and you said two sentences what I heard was um actually what I see what I observe is I know a couple of the ladies said that they were kind of nervous had butterflies but I noticed when they were speaking of home it it I observed it was like a, a relaxed like they were more relaxed and I just noticed that um family is really home like what you love the most is really where your home is and that's what everybody expressed really What I, um, what I felt um, a threat to all four of you. And Marlene, you articulated it in, um, in your words, you know, um, that There was a lot of there was a lot of emotion behind the very few words all of you had, and I felt for myself like a welling up inside of me. You know that, um, and then like the but there were no more butterflies. Like Marlene like said, there were no more butterflies. It was like each of you like came like for home. There was just this feeling of it doesn't it doesn't have to be a building. Like you were home. And I could feel it. You know, and that, like that feeling of, with such few words, with not the, us meeting for the first time. To feel that, like to connect, to feel like I couldn't connect. That is what I, you know, it's like, I wish and I want for our world to have more of. Because you could have, honestly, like with Pat McKay, with the circle of allowing, and she's had some circles and she said, then they go on and they go on and they go on and they go on. And that's perfectly fine as well. Each of you spoke a few words, but it was like the essence. you were comfortable or if there was some discomfort many people are not comfortable with pauses with silence and I sense that each of you are So this, you know, really, you know, it's, it's we're in a virtual format, a virtual world. 
yet I believe that there's a way for us to still connect and to listen to them. So I would like to sort of like transition, you know, to get, um, I promised myself before I started this, because I, I know I have a tendency to never stay on schedule and stay on time. This is when I think the last time I co-facilitated with Christina, I cut her off with all the things that she was supposed to be doing because I went on and on and on and on. <laughs> right? So I said, <laughs> I said, I am not gonna do it this time. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, you know, so what I'd love to hear is sort of like for each of you, what the experience was a very abbreviated, short, small circle, what the experience was for you. Are you speaking of this, what just happened? Or are you speaking of, okay. Well, I have to say, as I, I had said before, I had the butterflies, I couldn't shake them, but I played it as well as I could. Um, but once we started going and I started to feel that everybody was listening, um, and then I had these three women um, who have been through a similar situation. I, I felt that I was supported and cared for. And we're all over the country right now. You know, we're all in different places and we're connected via Zoom, like in a computer. What is this? But I can feel it. And um, the experience for me was just all I could say was magical. Just absolutely magical. I'm like ready to start crying. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yes, just in that short period of time when I was feeling the butterflies as well, I just started speaking and I just I didn't even realize that they left. Um, it, just in that, that snippet that I was talking, like I, I just felt supported and I felt a sense of comfort. And um, like you just mentioned, Jillian, I was thinking like, yeah, we're all connected. I've never met these women before in my life, but I feel a sense of of connection. And um, yeah, it's just... It's just awesome. Like I have no words. It's just, it's it just feels right. Like I don't know how else to put it. Um, I felt in that moment, I felt safe. I felt like I could share and I could be transparent, and I felt supported. You know, as I was said earlier, I am big on, you know, um, noticing people's body language and things like that, you know, facial expressions. And as I spoke, um, it was one of those things where I didn't have to hesitate or even think. I just said, and I just felt safe being able to go ahead and share um, what I was feeling and understanding that, you know, you know, that we all go, you know, we're all different, but we all go to pretty much the same things, you know, and the way to get through those is to support each other. Um, and I was the same way. I feel a lot more comfortable now. I've been <clears throat> really nervous about this whole situation, honestly. I've been... <laughs> like writing notes down and all kinds of things, but I have not had to really look when I just started speaking. It's just like, you know, you it's easy to talk about the things that you love and what's home because it just, it's this there and it's in your heart. And now 
I do feel like, you know, we're all connected. We all have the same things that we consider home and we love and everyone's engaging and actually listening to each other. It feels good to know that, you know, someone has also experienced the same things that you've been through and feel those way. So. Looks like. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to pop in and say that word safe is what sealed the deal. I feel so safe right now. It's, it's great. And then we have this connection, we have this bond and we have these things in common and we are not alone. I'm sitting here. In awe of the courage, the vulnerability, each of you. I mean, I will tell you whenever I am holding circles, the rest of the world doesn't exist. Now, when I just said that, I thought, oh, there's other people outside. <laughs> the <other circle>. <laughs> <laughs> right? But when I first, you know, just like, you know, I thought, well, there could be 50 people, 100, like, um, when we are in circle, None of that matters. All that matters are those in the circle. And yet I also know those in the circle and anything, any being that we brought in to the center of our circle, spirits, ancestors, those I mean, um, more from the spirit realm is what I feel in the circle. You know, but no one else. And I think that, um, and I felt that from each of you as well in the circle. That as each one was speaking, we were going around, you were present and you were listening. And there's a connection the four of you have with the lived experience. And I suspect you sense that. So my um, invitation now is I'm reminding myself that there is an outer circle, right? But, you know, is for us to I guess a challenge, you know, how do we create more of these spaces for all of us? You know, so that we feel safe where we feel heard. And all honesty in that being heard, we heal. We can do more of that and we can get out of our head. You know, as Christine said, you, you come into a conference and there's so much I gotta learn, I gotta learn, I gotta learn, right? I gotta make sure I got this down, I gotta, and, and we're so conditioned to do that. Right, even before coming in, you know, every were saying, I want to make sure I see the right things. It's all that. <laughs> Put that out the door. Just leave it, right? Leave it at the door. <laughs> I don't care what your note says, right? <laughs> it's, it's in you. You don't need those notes. And yet we're so conditioned to go to our head, you know, which is why. You know, with this, with the practice of deep listening is, no, get out of our head. We use it enough and we exercise it enough. For me personally, when I go to my head too much, it's what gets me in trouble. 
I agree. <laughs> it's what gets me in trouble. So I need to like let that one you know. And how do I really listen to all of me, my body, my heart? And so those activities and those exercises before was a reminder. I want all of us. Now we were all in this, just the five of us, but I believe the energy extended by those in the outer circle also helped create this. So we weren't alone, right? We had everybody in the outer circle extending energy towards us as well. So for the butterflies, for whatever um, discomfort, I appreciate each of you for your willingness to engage um, and for participating in something that has probably felt like incredibly unorthodox <laughs> <laughs> to try. I trusted like Kristen when you were given the invitation, like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say yes, but I don't know what I'm saying yes to. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm big jack, so um, yeah. So thank you um, for that. And Christine, I'm gonna invite you back in if you'd like to come back. I'm staying on time, Christine. <laughs> you are, you are. We actually do have time um, to debrief with the outer circle as well. If you have a question for them, Marlou. Um, well, do we have the... Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say, I, I clearly, like I said, wasn't paying attention to anything, right, <laughs> other than these four beautiful women. So nothing, yeah, didn't pay attention to. So if there are, you know, questions, honestly, or reflections or um, from the outer circle, um, you know, happy to, um, happy to respond to that. I think that there's been, is that the chat? Are you able to, were there any questions that came through, Christine? Uh, so I'm looking at the chat now. Everyone was very good in following your instructions, Mary Lou. And it seems like a lot of people were really present with us. Um, the, a couple of things did come through just validating uh, what, what people in the inner circle have said around um, not feeling alone, feeling safe. Um, and we have a comment from Anne. What an incredibly beautiful experience. Thank you so much for sharing this. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and um, throw out there to the outer circle, um, but also also the inner circle. So to everyone, really. Um, a couple of questions for you to noodle on. Um, how is deep listening related to amplifying community wisdom and social change? How is deep listening related to amplifying community wisdom and social change? And you may put some answers in the chat now. Um, we are. We are activating the chat again, the Whova chat. You may use it again. Um, and then also, if there's anyone who wants to be brave and share an answer just verbally with the rest of us, we will be open to that. I can see that Artesia already has her hand up. Thank you so much. Artesia, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, first off, thank you for the deep space to where you provided us to and I say us because we're all in the group together. You provided a space where we could just take a deep breath, self-reflect, and just basically cancel out everything that's going on. And sometimes we don't give that opportunity to do so. So I want to thank you for that. Also, when you just asked the question about listening and how we could, you know, basically create change, a lot of people listen to respond versus with the intent to understand. And that causes a lot of conflict. When you listen with the intent to respond, basically we've exchanged dialogue to where I'm paying attention to what you're saying to me. And I'm not, you're not dismissing anything that I'm mentioning. 
But when you're listening to res- uh, respond, wait, listen to with the intent to understand is where you're not being dismissive. When you're listening to just respond, you're being dismissive. You're over talking and you're not paying attention to none of my concerns. And this group, which you provided with us right now, we had to listen to you with an intent to understand where you were coming from with the space that she was providing for us and actually just stop to take a moment and just really listen to yourself. Get out of your head. We are all going through something, but I'm allowing you to take a moment to breathe. So to me, I feel like when we all could come together and give each other that space, that safe space to talk and sometimes be relatable that's how we could create change for me. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, so Thank you so much, Artesia. I, I appreciate your answer. Um, Wanda, I see that you also have your hand up. Yeah, I could just see this being, I mean, I, I'm in, in York, um, York, Pennsylvania, and I'm in the city and we have a long history of racism and, and other, you know, social issues. Um, and for years, it's been this discussion of how do we handle this? And, you know, and every so often something will happen like George Floyd and then everybody's like, oh, now we got to talk about it. And then, you know, you hear, then it, that dies down and then nothing. And then you'll have the random panel discussions or the round tables. And I'm, I'm like, this is just giving me all kinds of ideas. Um, because I do have some uh, co-conspirators in this community that I can whisper in their ears and say, you know what, this might not, this would be a really cool thing to do to, if you can get people, because there are people that really want to get engaged. I mean, if they're not, if somebody's not ready for it, they're not going to do it. But I know there are people that are engaged that really want to have those hard conversations, but having like a panel discussion town hall can be off-putting and it's, it's, this is much more, I mean, this is much more real, I think, and genuine and people can share what they want to share there. It's not confrontational. It's people with lived experience, no matter what your lived experience is, answering questions, talking about their experiences while others that don't have that experience listen. And I think that could go a long way to foster understanding. Thank you so much, Wanda. So that actually brings me to another question. Oh, but it looks like Marilu. Yeah, I just chimed in for a second with that. Um, so Wanda, I mean, I both who um, had comments, and I appreciate that you're kind of like thinking, well, how can this apply, right, in other areas for something else? And I think in terms of social change, in terms of listening to wisdom that's within the community, um, lived experiences, um, and also if you want to engage in conversations where they are very difficult, you know, where you have opposite ends of the spectrum, right? The one thing that I would just um, say is in order to be able to have these circles and to be able to hold these circles, we have to do our own work, right? So whoever it is, me as a facilitator, um, if I'm going to hold these circles, um, I need to do my own work, right? So that I'm not reactive, you know, because we are all human. If I don't do my own work, I have my own lived experiences, I will get triggered. Somebody may some say something and I get triggered, right? So for us to really be able to create more spaces where you're really deeply listening to each other, we have to first learn how to listen to ourselves. Mm. Learn how to listen to ourselves. You know, because I am going to get triggered. Something, there's something in my lived experience that I have not healed 100% or I've started healing, but still needs a lot more healing. I still tell myself, my God, for the years of therapy and all the things that I've been going through, I'm still dealing with this, right? So it's like a lifelong journey. You know, so what we have to do is like, let's just say hypothetically in the inner circle, somebody happened to have said something that just triggered me. 
and I could feel it in my body. If I don't do my own work and I can acknowledge, okay, I just realize what happened, right? Be able to breathe, be able to come back to center, ground myself, bring the attention back to whoever was speaking, right? And make a choice. You know, so this, the ability to be able to have more listening circles requires, um, so the message I'm, the reason I'm saying this, I don't want for people to say, okay, now this is something that we could just go do. We have to do our own work. Every single one of us has to do our own work. You know, so I just wanted to, um, but I appreciate that the, I, you know, the, you know, because it can, it can be an incredible tool for us an incredible tool for ourselves personally. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Christine. See, I'm going on and on again. Right? No, please go on. <laughs> um, there was somebody who had a hand up uh, that just put it down, and I want to make sure that that person knows that I did see them. If you want to say something, you're welcome to. Yeah, I do. But um, hopefully I can say this right. So I am a white person with, um, I have children and grandchildren and, and they're all of color. Um, when you're asking that question about listening and how important it was about seven years ago, we started this, uh, at my job, um, understanding what's happening in the world with discrimination and stuff and something I really had a hard time trying to make this short, really had a hard time in the beginning with what that's happening. There's something I'm not seeing. Um, speaking with my children and with others, I had to, I didn't understand I was miss what I was missing or how to find what I was missing. And I had to learn how to listen very open to what others are going through, what's really happening. Um, I'm like, I was like, wow. And I went to my son and I asked him about this white privilege thing. And he says, yeah, mom, <laughs> it's happening and hearing the stories. So listening to help create change is, yeah. And to keep talking, having these circles, um, it, it's to me, it's everything. It's very important. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much. And something has happened to my screen, but I think that was Donna speaking. Donna, thank you. Um, yes. Um, and I see one last hand. This is um, this is the last comment I'm going to take for this particular question, and then I'm going to move on to a second question. So, Alyssa. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to make it short. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to say this, this space, um, allowed me to recognize how important, um, holding your own actual physical spaces and separating that kind of from your mind. Um, I know that's kind of like an abstract, uh, thought, but, um, doing, doing this, even just being a part of the outer circle kind of allowed me to realize how um, important even just your surroundings and environment are to your thoughts. And uh, thank you for the experience. Hey, thank you for sharing. Um, and again, I think my, something has happened to my Zoom, but I'm glad it's at the end of the day. Um, I am going to move on to the second question um, and you can feel free to put that in the Hoover chat um, and then we can maybe take one or two hands, but I would like to ask folks how they are going to practice deep listening. How will you as an individual practice deep listening? Can I? Yes, of course. So with me, um, that's actually part of what I do for a living, having to listen. Um, and I am still working on that. I 
do it every day, but sometimes I have to, um, like Mary Lou said, it, it was how she went about explaining, like not multitasking and being able to clear your mind and all of those things there. And sometimes when I go into, um, because I am a social worker, I just want to put that out there. Sometimes when I go in with my clients, before I would have all this other stuff with other Kate, things like that, you know, going on. Um, but I had to, and then I would listen, but it was like, I was hearing what I wanted to hear opposed to what they were really saying. And what I've started doing now, which is a big part of my job is to paraphrase to make sure that I understand. So by paraphrasing, so it looks like you're saying, and then I'll kind of give it back to them to see, is that what they're saying? Instead of me just, oh, okay, this is what you're saying, or just, you know, going with what I, what I understood opposed to what I heard. I, I think that's what, yeah. So yeah, it's just one of those things where I have to go in there and clear everything out because if I don't, you know, I'm not present with that person and it, 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 you know, I'm constantly trying to, you know, I got this other stuff here going on multitasking, but I'm not really hearing the person. So I like how, um, um, is it Mar Marlou went and, and gave us those exercises, you know, open up, you know, breathe here. And that was good because it, 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 gave, it allowed me to remove all those things to kind of just focus on what was going on and hearing everyone. Thank you, Marlene. And um, we have time for one more. Tanita uh, did have a hand up. And if you would like to speak, we welcome you back. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I appreciate all of you guys just for sharing your moment and allowing me to come into your space, allow me to hear your heart. That was truly amazing. I felt like this yaya sisterhood. I don't know how to explain it, but I felt like I was part of you. Like some of the things that you said, I felt, I felt it. It was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So thank you. Um, I am also a social worker. So a lot of the times, a lot of my clients, they have a, a lot to say because it's a lot going on in their head, right? And so giving people that, being a social worker, you know, your baby, it's on time. You got time, you got to, you got to, you only got a certain amount of time, but giving people that time to first breathe. I noticed all you guys breathe and everybody had the, you guys said that you had this like nervousness. I was like, oh my God, I feel that too. And I'm not even speaking. So giving that people that time to breathe and then allowing people to just close their eyes and speak. I noticed a lot of you guys closed your eyes and I, and it, it was truth. You told your truth. And I think that's one thing I really want to take away from this is to allow my clients to tell their authentic truth. So first, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And that's pretty much all I have to say. All right. Well, thank you, Tanita, for sharing. And I just want to thank everyone who has been a part of this experience. Mari Lou as the person who holds the circle, um, to our inner circle, to our outer circle. Thank you for everything. Um, what an honor for us to hear from you. So at this time, I am going to end the deep listening session. Um, again, my appreciation for everything that you have shared with us. And yes. and now uh, we're in the home stretch for the day. All that's left is our closing remarks, but I still encourage everyone to stick around because we do have a special guest who, who you will be hearing from for our closing. Um, so thank you again to all of you for sticking around to the very end. I hope I speak for everyone when I say that today has been really wonderful. It's a virtual space, which can be difficult to create a community in, but we hope that you still find opportunities to take that extra step and meet new people across disciplines, across geography, roles, whatever else usually keeps us siloed. 
Remember that Whova makes it easy for you to see who the other attendees are, their fields, um, and also to send each other messages and set up meetups. We hope you take advantage of this very powerful tool. In fact, I'd like to take a moment now to ask everyone to open up the Whova app on their phones and to send a message to someone who impacted you today. It can be a speaker, an organizer, or a fellow attendee, even if that message is just, hi, I really liked what you said during X session. So I'll give you all a moment to go ahead and do that. Please open up your Hoopa apps, send a message to someone who impacted you today. Tonight, I hope everyone who receives a message takes a moment to respond. And I also hope that everyone scrolls, scrolls through the community section of the app. I am very impressed with what is already going on in there. Um, there are a lot of really great messages that have been populating the community board um, even before the conference began. So I know I'm looking forward to looking through what has been posted now that day one is over and we've all been truly inspired. But don't stay up too late looking through Whova. Uh, because you don't want to be late for day two of the conference. Tomorrow, we're covering topics in accessibility and well-being. This day is dedicated to creating a more inclusive and accessible world for people with disabilities. It's filled with a lot of great stuff, but just a few highlights. Uh, early in the day, we'll hear from Carrie Morrison, the project director of Heart Forward LA, both of our short talks tomorrow are focused on emotional support animals and reasonable accommodation. And for those talks, we'll be hearing from Dr. Janet Hoy Gerlach, founder and principal consultant at One Health People Animal Wellness Services. Timothy J. Moran, Deputy, Deputy Chief of the Housing and Civil Enforcement Section of the Civil Rights Division at the U.S. Department of Justice. Janine Worden, Associate General Counsel at the Office of Fair Housing, Office of General Counsel, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. So great folks who are joining us for our sh short talks. Um, our closing keynote for the day is Havan Gurma, the first deafblind person to graduate from Harvard Law School, a human rights lawyer advancing disability justice, and a White House champion of change. Uh, just a warning to you all, I might pass out as I'm interviewing her tomorrow. I still can't believe she said yes to our invitation. Um, so now before we sign off for the day, I'd like to invite my dog is my home's good friend, Haiti Livesman to the virtual stage. So Haiti, lovely to see you. Hi. Lovely to see you too. Hi. Hi everyone. Um, so Haiti is a graduate of Harvard Law School and former Commonwealth Scholar. She's the founder and CEO of One Health Partners, a not-for-profit community health and social service organization federally incorporated in Canada and based at the Center for Social Innovation in Toronto. Um, Haiti's going to talk a little bit more about One Health Partners as I hand things over to her. She's obviously a very accomplished person and a driver of de uh, delivering innovative human animal support to her community, but she is also a very talented lyricist. Um, so you're about to hear some hype music. Um, it's our exit music and the lyrics were written by Heidi to honor the human animal bond. So thank you, uh, Haiti, for allowing us to play this closing song better together and for joining us now to explain the inspiration behind your music. Thank you so much, uh, Christine, for your introduction. Uh, so generous as always and for the privilege, uh, pleasure, and possibility of contributing in a small way to this amazing conference and community, a community of trauma-informed care, compassion, courage, kinship, harm reduction, and humanity. Humanity that crosses the species boundary and includes the most vulnerable human animal bonded families amongst us. It's an honor and a slightly daunting pleasure to be here 
And I'm really humbled to be in your company and the company of so many people doing life-changing, system-changing work across North America and other parts of the world. So my name is Heidi Lebesman, as Christine mentioned, and I'm the founder of One Health Partners, a not-for-profit community health and social service organization that operates at the intersection of animal welfare, human health care, education and social services, based at the Centre for Social Innovation in Toronto, Canada. Our flagship community service program is a trauma-informed animal-assisted therapy program that serves a range of vulnerable populations, not all homeless, but often with overlapping, intersecting vulnerabilities that may include homelessness. Uh, my pronouns are um, she, her, although I have to confess in the context of reading uh, Robin Wall Kimmerer's magnificent book, Braiding Sweetgrass, I'm tempted to add the, the pronoun key in kinship with her effort to develop pronouns with multicultural and multilingual origins that resist the binary classifications and objectifying tendencies of pronouns in the English language and that do better justice to the animacy, agency, personality, and subjectivity of the more than human worlds we are related. Normally, at least in Canada, it would be conventional at this point for a speaker to include some kind of land acknowledgement. I've been surprised actually not to hear many land acknowledgements, um, but uh, I prepared my, my remarks anticipating many land acknowledgements. So partly because I want to avoid the risk of insufficiently mindful acknowledgement in a formulaic recitation, I want to simply stress how essential I believe it is to recognize the import and impact of intergenerational trauma, histories and legacies of colonialism, and laws, narratives, and logics of cultural imperialism in the work of changing lives and systems that many of us are engaged and the conference is dedicated. On a promising note, I think it's important to acknowledge the oft neglected wisdom, stories, and teachings we can learn from engagement with Indigenous peoples and traditions. As recognition grows through catalytic and catastrophic prompts like the COVID-19 global pandemic, that humankind as a species is vulnerably housed and threatened with eviction from our mortal home on earth. The quest and question of co-sheltering concerns and demands us to think not simply about co-sheltering of human animal bonded families, but the relationship between peoples, animals and our planet and more general questions of interspecies solidarity and justice locally and globally. In this quest for co-sheltering on a species and planetary scale, we have so much to learn from Indigenous traditions and teachings. Imagine how different our lives, laws and systems of social organisation would be if they were predicated on a belief that we are all related, rather than the beliefs of human exceptionalism, anthropocentrism, racism and cultural imperialism that undergird the centuries of human domination, exploitation and dispossession at the spiritual, intellectual and existential roots of homelessness everywhere and on every scale. With these thoughts in mind, amongst others that you have gathered through the day, I'm thinking personally in particular of the stories of Gillian and Sire. I'd like to now turn to introduction of the song that is going, going to close um, conference proceedings for the day. The song is called Better Together. Uh, it is the official theme song of One Health Partners and is linked to our mission to promote understanding and appreciation of the human animal bond and to leverage that understanding in the service of social good. <clears throat> to the extent that it is linked to this mission, however, it is not simply One Health Partners song, but a song that belongs to anybody and everybody who knows from experience, witness, 
or shared testimony, the value of the human animal bond and how much recognition, respect and support for the human animal bond both means and matters both for animal welfare and as a social determinant of human health and well-being. The song is essentially a tribute to and celebration of the transformative power and beauty of the human animal bond and an affirmation of our common potential, our common human potential for humanity. It is structured as a dialogue between a person and a dog. The dog is the chorus and also a messenger and model of trauma-informed care, always by my side, never judging who I am, meeting their person where they are, the friend I want to see, living, loving, letting be. There are two things that I absolutely love about the human-animal bond that I try to capture in the lyrics of the song. First, it is a relationship that crosses almost every division of humankind. And second, it is one of the very few relationships in our deeply stratified, polarized, class and caste inflicted world where status is not as prevalent in interactions. The human animal bond provides a shortcut to the heart and a shortcut to kinship. I think one of the things that makes the human animal bond so liberating and powerful is that human animal interactions seem to engage and enable the release of dimensions of the self that bring out qualities and possibilities of being that may be hidden and obscured by other categories, labels, preconceptions, and identifications of ourselves and each other. When you listen to the song, notice the chorus voicing our dogs or cats faith and love without prejudice. I know your soft side. I know your best side. I know your kind side. I know your possibility. These are qualities that are rooted in the mystery of the human condition and the mystery of the human heart. They are possibilities of being which human animal interaction, like music, seems to harbor catalytic power to unfold and reveal, nurture and grow, in the darkest and most inhospitable crevices of being in the world. I think at heart, every human being, homeless or the queen, wants to be encountered as a person with agency, feeling, potential, and desire for meaningful life. And it is both the engagement and revelation of this truth that makes the human animal bond so powerful and transformative. As you listen to the song and reflect with music, musical accompaniment on the proceedings of the day and your work more generally, my hope is that the song may encourage and inspire reflection on both the human animal bond, the subject of the song, and meta reflection on the impulse towards good, the courage to take risks, and the value of collaboration. Without the amazing musical talent of musician and composer Glenn Morrison and vocalists Kat Johnson and Josh Sahunter or the recording assistance of Brandon Eunice, the song would never have come into being. Without Christine Kim, Creative Allies, Gillian and Sire, Nat Fields, Anne Oliver and many others who are part of the co-sheltering collaborative this conference would not have happened. Better Together speaks to the value of the human-animal bond, but it also speaks in another register to the value of working together and collaboration. We are better together with our beloved companion animals. We are better together through mutual help and kindred care. We are better and stronger together than alone. Thank you to everyone here for listening and your compassionate care. I hope you enjoy the song and the rest of this amazing conference. Thank you and good night.